Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Badger Breakdown. I'm Mike Lucas for UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by Matt LePay, the voice of the Badgers. Another opener, another quarterback. One, two, three, Scott Tolzien, Russell Wilson, and now Danny O'Brien. Now, before we go there, one question I've been getting a lot this week is what excites you more? on Saturday, seeing Danny O'Brien or seeing Monte Ball? How would you answer that? I think in terms of excitement level, probably seeing Monte Ball because I know how I'm exciting he can be. Uh, my curiosity factor is with Danny O'Brien, but I think I'm like it. anybody who has seen the Badgers the last, especially with Monte, the last year and a half. You want to see these guys turn him loose and see what he can do. We've seen just enough of him in practice that he's got fresher legs than anybody else, so that's a bit deceiving. But I think if there's been a question, and I think it's legitimate, he hasn't been taken to the ground, he hasn't been tackled. Now, coaches poo-poo that all the time, but it'll be interesting to see how he responds. And, and I think, Mike, even without what happened to Monte before camp started, I don't know how much they would have been taking him to the ground Very anyway. True. Very because true. Because they know what he can do. It, it reminds me to, to a to a similar extent when Ron played. Ron yeah, how'd that turn out? Yeah, it was okay. It worked okay. out all right. They knew what he could do. So, like, okay, he knows the drill. He knows how to get himself ready for the season. And it really gave them the opportunity to get Melvin Gordon and James White and Jeff Lewis some more repetitions. Uh, you never know. So, my guess is Monte is going to handle this fine. Along those lines of trying to find a very intriguing storyline, and there's no shortage of them, we don't normally talk about coaches for season openers, but this year it's unavoidable. And I think you start with the offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, don't you? Yeah, you do, and I, and I think all those coaches would tell you the transition is over, which is what you would expect them to say. They've been together from the spring to now, but let, let's face it, I mean, they lost some really good assistant coaches here, some great assistant coaches, and, and this group here is a very impressive group. You look at the resumes of all of them, and it's very impressive. But I think we're all we're interested to see how that mesh will be, how Matt Canada will work with the offense, all of those guys. But uh, I think if you ask the average fan, it's the, it's the play caller everybody's interested in watching, and I think we're in that group. Well, everybody's stressed that the Badgers are going to continue to play big boy football. We're going to play Wisconsin football, which is something they've been able to hang their helmet and their hat on for a number of years under Brett Bielema. But still, you've got different personnel than you did last year, and it starts with the quarterback. But you also have a, it would seem to be a, a great blessing of tailbacks, if you want to put it that way, a little depth at that position. So you want to utilize that strength. I think they have versatility. We've talked a lot even in, in these segments about wanting to watch these wide receivers, these young wide receivers grow. But you, you mentioned an area there with tailback with, with those three guys, the primary tailbacks with Monte Ball, with James White, and Melvin Gordon. Gerard Cadigan, the fullback. Derek Watt, the fullback. His, Derek's transition seems to have gone very, very well. Jacob Pedersen, the other tight ends. I think there's versatility there why those young wide receivers continue to grow. I think they still have several ways they can move the ball. Now, when you talk about building a really good, solid Big Ten defense capable of winning a conference title, you talk about playmakers. And so with this team, you talk about the two linebackers, Taylor and Borland, and the defensive end who's coming off an injury, and that's David Gilbert. Yeah, I... It's, we'll never know the answer, but it's easy to ask what might have been last year had David Gilbert been healthy wire to wire. I know Charlie Parkins, co-defensive coordinator and the position group coach in the D-line, was really encouraged with Gilbert's development prior to his injury. Now, David will tell you he's back, ready to roll. And what's also encouraging, it'll be interesting to see, Mike, as good as they think David Gilbert can be, I know Charlie has been impressed with Pat Muldoon as camp has moved along. He can be somebody. Uh, Brendan Kelly can be somebody. As long as there is somebody, that maybe it's a different guy every week, but as long as there's somebody who really strikes fear in opposing offenses, then you got something going up front. Now I'm going to be honest with you. None of the names on the Northern Iowa roster are going to resonate with anybody <laughs> in the state of Wisconsin. However, this has been a really solid, good program at its level for X number of years. Yeah, and that's real, too. And I think you know some people may hear this, and, they, and if you don't know much about Northern Iowa, you go, yeah, right, but what you're saying is exactly right. It's been a very good team at the FCS level for a long time. Uh, Mark Farley was a, was a player there. He was a walk-on turn team captain. Sound familiar? Uh, it's worked, worked out pretty well with the guy at Wisconsin. It's worked out well for Coach Farley at, at Northern Iowa as well. And, 
They run a little more of an up-tempo offense. Quarterback is different now, like Wisconsin. They're going through a transition at the quarterback position. But defensively last year, they forced a lot of turnovers. And one thing to watch, they're specialists. The punter and the place kicker, they're veterans. And the kicker especially, Tyler Sievertson, is very, very good. So, yeah, just something to maybe give the underdog a little confidence coming into Madison. Now, one thing I've heard all week, these guys are tired of playing Wisconsin. <laughs> they're, they're tired of beating up on each other. They need to find out some questions and answers from, from a game, a yeah. game situation. And that's the only way you really learn about yourself, and that starts on Saturday. Yeah, and I think even coaches will admit to that. Normally, coaches can never practice enough. We've been around coaches a long time, but I think this group, most of them, if not all of them, would tell you that it's time to go get a game tape. Work off of that. You can look at the practice tape and you build off of that as best you can. And Wisconsin's been very good at doing that. But now you want to see them against a, a different uniform and then start their journey and see what happens week one to week two. The whole place looks great, doesn't it? It really, this play, it, it gets better with age. It really does. Fans coming into the stadium on Saturday. You're going to like it. You are going to love what you see here. We'll have to find out where the Badgers uh, take us this year, huh? Yeah, looking forward to the ride. It's about time, huh? We've been yeah. talking about it enough. It's time to go see him play, see what happens. No doubt about it. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching UWBadgers.com.